Unit 11, Listening, Part 4. You will hear a high school student interviewing a doctor as part of his research for a project on sleep. For questions 1 to 7, choose the best answer A, B or C. Thank you for seeing me, Dr Reed. I've got some questions I need to investigate for my project on the effect of sleep on school students. OK, well, fire away. Well, the first thing I'm not sure about is whether people in general are sleeping less than in the past. I've read some reports on the internet which give conflicting information. It's good to see you are checking your facts. The internet can be unreliable. As you know, today the average person gets about seven and a half hours sleep every night, which is a bit less than the recommended eight hours. However, without the interference of electric light bulbs and alarm clocks, people usually sleep for nine hours. And this was the case up to the early part of the 20th century. I thought so. And is it natural for people to just sleep at night like most people do now? If allowed to, we would sleep for two periods in the night and get up and do things in the middle. We just don't do that now because of our working days. Also, most people have a tendency to feel sleepy after lunch. But because of the way our days are structured, most of us just have a cup of coffee and carry on. When we should let ourselves have a nap, just for half an hour at the most. But a constant need to nap is a sign that people aren't getting enough sleep at night, which is a problem that seems to be getting worse. I've read that it's a problem that affects teenagers in particular. That's correct. A lot of teenagers are getting far too little sleep, and there are concerns that this could have a serious long-term impact on their health. But we don't know for sure yet. Researchers are also looking into how far a lack of sleep affects young people with depression. But one study has clearly demonstrated that high school students getting low grades also get on average one hour less sleep than students getting A's and B's. Really? Why do you think teenagers aren't getting enough sleep? It's an interesting question. It's a problem that seems to affect all teenagers, not just the ones who eat the wrong things and who don't take any exercise. So my feeling is that parents need to take more responsibility. Too many teenagers watch TV in their rooms or play computer games until very late. Or they're allowed to go out on school nights. Some of my friends say they stay up late because they can't get to sleep if they go to bed earlier. Well... There are things you can do to make yourself feel sleepy. Your brain needs to switch off and relax. So don't have any drinks that contain caffeine, which includes hot chocolate and a lot of soft drinks. Reading a book you know well or listening to a story rather than music should help your brain to relax. So you shouldn't do your homework just before going to sleep? Definitely not. Schools should be careful how much homework they set because working late in the evening doesn't help people to get a good night's sleep. It would be better for schools to stay open for longer so that pupils can do their homework before they get home to avoid this problem. Another thing that some schools have tried successfully is to begin the school day half an hour later, which seems like a good idea to me. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you, Dr Reed. Just one last question. Is it true that our brains are actively thinking while we're asleep? Well, our brains are good at sorting information while we are asleep. It's often the case that we wake up having found the answer to a problem that we'd been worrying about the day before. But it's important to write it down immediately, as we can forget it easily. <sighs> Great. Thanks very much for your help. Unit 12, Listening, Part 2 You will hear a woman called Kirsty Willis, who works in a zoo, giving a talk to students about careers with animals. For questions 1 to 10, complete the sentences with a word or short phrase. Good morning. My name's Kirsty Willis, and I'm here to talk to you about what it's like to work in a zoo and about some other careers you may be interested in that also involve working with animals. OK, 
The job that most people associate with working with animals is in a zoo. Although there are job openings which don't require many qualifications, for most posts there's a lot of competition, so it's unlikely that you'll be considered without a degree. Zoos have changed a lot over the years and focus on a conservation role nowadays, which involves care, education, and study. But don't expect to have very much contact with the animals, because they tend to be left as much as possible to live as they would in the wild. Although you still may help with normal tasks of feeding, keeping records, etc., a lot of the time is spent on education. So you should have excellent public speaking skills. You'll be talking to visitors to the zoo and showing groups of school children round. So you need to be able to get your enthusiasm across to them. Because what happens in a zoo is more or less the same each day, the job will appeal to you if you like to have routines in your life. You will have to deal with unexpected problems and challenges on occasions, of course, but that's the same in most jobs. Another related area is working in aquariums with sea mammals and fish. You need similar skills to those required for working in a zoo, but you also need to be able to swim well and have experience of using a boat, as most of the aquariums have large areas of water. You'll spend a large part of the day preparing and distributing the fishy diets and dealing with chemicals that are used in the tanks. The job isn't as physically tiring as working in a zoo, but by the time you go home, you will almost certainly smell. It will be obvious to everyone that you've been working with fish. One job that immediately springs to mind when we mention working with animals is working as a vet. Training for this takes a long time, as long or even longer than for a doctor. You can work with all kinds of animals. But you have to take into consideration that it can be frustrating, because the animals can be very negative towards the vet. Conditioning tells them that every time this guy comes around, they aren't feeling well, or it's going to be an uncomfortable, scary experience. To be a good vet, you don't just need knowledge of the science; you should be able to communicate with both animals and humans. That skill is really important. Much more than making a quick decision about what is wrong with an animal. The last job I'm going to talk about is being an animal trainer. There used to be opportunities in circuses, but animals are used much less now to perform. But animal trainers are still required in films, so it's worth thinking about that. The training required is primarily experience. The pay for these jobs can be pretty low, and many people will work for free at first. It's also very hard work. The day starts early, as early as four or five in the morning, and in most cases won't finish till fourteen hours later. Don't forget, in most jobs you work eight hours a day maximum. This is definitely not a nine-to-five job. If you'd like any more information, there are a number of websites that will. Unit thirteen, listening, part four. You will hear a journalist talking on the radio about adults in their twenties and thirties who still live with their parents. For questions one to seven, choose the best answer: A, B, or C. Hello, and welcome to the program. This morning, we're going to discuss boomerang kids. Adults that stay at home or return after university to live with their parents until they're in their mid twenties or even their mid thirties, and here to tell us about the results of a recent survey on this subject is Sadie Andrews. Thanks, Matt. Yes, well, the results show that the number of eighteen to twenty-four year olds in Europe still living at home has reached sixty-seven percent. Although that figure is much lower for countries in Northern Europe, Sweden has overtaken the UK and France as the country with the fewest boomerang kids, with only forty-six percent of this age group still living at home. As you might expect, that figure rises to over ninety percent for countries in Southern Europe, such as Spain and Italy, where young people have traditionally lived with their parents for longer.
And despite relatively low rents, there's little change here because family relationships remain very strong. That's very interesting. And what about outside Europe? Yes, the survey also covered the United States, where the trend is also for people to live at home longer. Though here the reason given wasn't to do with people having to pay back huge student loans, as this is nothing new. Boomerang kids here said there was no reason for them to leave home because they got on so well with their parents. <laughs> Many people reported continuing to live at home even after they got married. So there's obviously less of a generation gap than there used to be. I can see there are advantages. Having your mum to do your washing and ironing, for example. <laughs> People interviewed for the survey didn't admit to that, even if it were true. Though I know my mum wouldn't be prepared to do my washing and ironing. <laughs> In fact, the impression I get is that boomerang kids are pretty responsible people. What they seem to appreciate most is that they're not spending vast sums of money on rent and other bills, so they can put money aside for when they do leave. But of course, there are disadvantages. Interviewees report that having to tell their parents what time they'll be home or not being able to spend time at home with friends without first asking permission is a frustrating experience. And they complain that a lot of parents still think of boomerang kids as just kids. Yes, that must be difficult. What about the parents? What do they think? On the whole, most don't seem to mind and are willing to help their adult children out wherever possible. However, in some cases, parents find that just when they've reached the point in their lives when they have the time and the money to do whatever they want, they are held back because of their adult children's needs. On the other hand, there is evidence to show that having boomerang kids back at home does keep them young. They're more likely to be in touch with the latest ideas in fashion and watch different TV programmes. And some parents say they feel less tired because there's more going on at home. Maybe their children's friends coming in and more people to talk to. Right. So before we hear from the listeners, what advice would you give for families in this situation? Well... Obviously, things are going to run more smoothly if everyone involved does their fair share. So it's a good idea to work out a fair contribution for bills and jobs such as shopping and washing up. However, feedback from the results of the survey suggests that deciding in advance how often they are going to eat together, if at all, and at what time, will avoid resentment building up on both sides. This causes more arguments than any other issue. Thanks, Sadie. Unit 14. Listening. Part 3. You will hear five short extracts in which people are talking about something they are going to celebrate. For questions 1 to 5, choose from the list A to H what each person is going to celebrate. Use the letters only once. There are three extra letters which you do not need to use. Speaker 1 It's going to be good fun. We'll all get together after school in my cousin's flat and get it ready for the party. Then we'll wait until Louisa arrives. We'll have a cake and there'll be three candles on it, one for every year she and her family have been away. There'll be piles of food too, of course, but we'll need it for all the people who are coming. I can't believe I'm going to see her again after all this time. It's definitely worth celebrating. She can't possibly have any idea of what we're planning. We've all promised to keep it secret. I can't wait. Speaker 2 We always do this, which is nice, because it means having a little celebration at the beginning, rather than the end of the school year. It's a nice way to welcome a person who's, after all, going to be quite important in our lives for a while. And it's an opportunity for them to get to know the students they'll be teaching. Someone usually bakes a cake and brings it in. It's never me, because my cakes could hardly be called prize winning. They're usually rather flat. Then we just chat and enjoy this more informal occasion before getting on with all the work we have to do. Speaker 3 
all my friends took part, though none of us really expected to get anywhere at all. But my best friend had an email back from the organisers saying her short story would be in the final, so you can imagine how excited we all got. Then, when she came first, we just had to mark the occasion. My brother passed his driving test last year, so he drove some of us to the beach. Other people got lifts, too. Then we had the most wonderful picnic. It was a bit like the birthday parties my brothers and I used to have when we were little. It was lovely. Speaker 4 All my family are delighted, and my brother is, obviously. So we're all going out to a restaurant to celebrate. That's the best thing for me. Though I'm really happy about his success too. It's very competitive. Loads of people want to study at that college, because the teaching is so good, apparently. Anyway, he did very well to get in, and that's why my parents are making such a fuss. All his hard work has finally paid off, and he has the whole summer to relax now, because it's the end of term too. He'll have time to do things like learn to drive. Lucky him! Speaker 5 Although we're all sad my sister's going, and we'll miss her a lot, it isn't as if we won't see her loads in the future. She's only going to live a few streets away, and, although our flat is much bigger than the one she's moving to, she'll have room for visitors, as long as we don't all go round at once. So we're having the party at our place instead of hers, and we want it to be a happy occasion, naturally. Most of her friends can make it, which is cool, and I'm going to be in charge of the music. I'm really looking forward to it.